this app has happens to be one that I had something to do with and and everybody that I work with every day. And this app is the Sports Stats Tracker. We haven't had a better name for it yet, but a lot of people came together to build this. So that's me on the right, obviously. Matt's on the left. Matt's going to do a demo of this one. Um, Sarah's on the call, too. And so I'll give you a little heads up on everybody here and what we did on it. So Matt, I, I had the idea. I talked to Matt about it. Matt was like, that sounds fun. Let's do it. So Matt and I kind of pulled together a prototype of it, and we got it working. And the end, and it looked really bad. <laughs> and then Damien, we looked in Damien on our team, and Damien helped us organize the screens better and put a really nice flow into it, so it made sense in our UX. And then Sarah came along and made it not just organized, but she made it look really pretty and did our design on it. And then when we were done with all that, Hubert took the design and applied it to our Power App. And so we build power apps like this all the time, really, in, in real life, too. And so we were all very familiar with these roles and kind of hand how to hand it off to each other and do that. So I know we're pretty over on time, so I'm going to go quick through my part here. So why do we make this app? Well, the app started as an idea during my son's lacrosse practice a couple weeks ago or a couple months ago. And it started out because we were talking about one of the moms who helped record stats for the team and how she actually didn't even see her son score a goal one time because she was so busy looking at the stat book recording it. So our process used to work like this. We had two people recording stats. We had one person who I'll call the spotter. And that person watches the game and they audibly say out loud when they see something happen. Like, number one got an assist, or number two got a ground ball, or number three scored a goal. The recorder is listening to that and trying to watch the game, but they're looking up and down the whole time, and they're looking at the stat sheet in our stat book, and they're trying to listen to what that person said and find the spot and mark it down. And right at that moment is when someone missed their kid scoring a goal. And when I heard about that at practice, I was like, that stinks. I was like, we got to find a better way. So then you all, everyone on this call probably knows this, right? Like people know you as the computer guy. And so all of a sudden it turns out, oh, Todd, you should make an app like that. And hence the idea was hatched. So the idea was create an app where we don't have to have two people doing it and you don't need to touch a paper and pencil and look down. And you can look at the game the whole time and watch your own little personal all-star go out there and make fun plays and, and, and you know enjoy that part of your life. And so that's how this app came about. Let me tell you how it works. We have this deck available after the call, too, if you want to dive in more. I'm not going to touch on every detail because we're over time, but I'll give you a high-level overview of what's happening. We start in the top left, and we say something to our power app, like number 12, goal, number 14, assist. It's exactly how we will say it into the power app. Then that power app takes that, that audio data, the actual audio data that we recorded, and it throws it at a flow. And it also throws the ID of the game, as you'll see in our app. Which game are we doing this stat for? After that, from this point all the way till we get back to purple, we're in a flow. The first thing the flow does is it has to go out and call an Azure function to use FFmpeg to convert the audio format to WAV. The reason we have to do that is because Azure Cognitive Services on our next step We'll take that wave file and then turn that speech into text. And so at this point, this is actually what it looks like. We said number 12 goal, number 14 assist. It's exactly what we're getting back from cognitive services at this point. We're like, sweet. It's, it's, it knew what we said. So we then split this into an array. And we split on the word number, which gives us exactly what our stats are and which player recorded them in the shape of an array. Now, I made that sound like, oh, that was easy to do. We just ran split. Matt and I sat around for hours trying to figure out the right way to do this and get us to the point where we could iterate through it. The reason we wanted to split is because sometimes actions fast in sports, right? You Sometimes you may need to say number 12, goal, number 13, assist, right after each other 
or other rapid fire statistics. And you can't just record and wait till it records in the database and then try to remember what else happened to hit record again. So we wanted to be able to hit record, say a bunch of things, and then say go process. So that's why we needed to come up with the array. After we've got the array, we convert it to digits with an Azure function. Shout out to Matthew Devaney and Bob German on this one. I, I didn't know how to go about this. I put a shout out on Twitter. People came back and said, hey, Todd, here's a library that'll do that. I said, perfect, because what I needed to do is we needed to take this 12 and turn it into a number 12 so we could do easier database lookups and assigning statistics. So we did that inside of an Azure function too. Then we're back in flow. As you can see, the whole way through its flow, there's some connections to Dataverse as well. We figure out which stat was uh, recorded and we, we put it in a variable. So we're looping through the array here in this whole gray section row by row. The first time I go through here, you can see I'm going to get goal as my stat and I'm going to get 12 as the player who did it. Now that I have all that, we're essentially doing what we like to call the upsert, right? Basically, if the record for this particular player in this game for this stat has not been recorded, then insert a record. If not, then figure out if they've already recorded a stat, what is their current, how many times they recorded the stat in the game and increment it by one. And so that's really all of what this is doing here. I'm not gonna go into them one by one. I bet most of you probably read it already. So essentially, that's what we do. We loop through one and one, and then we go in the Dataverse and insert or update, depending on if the player's recorded the stat. And eventually, it will look like this in this example I have here. We do have some variables that we need to set that allow us to do this upsert type operation. So we have to reset those before we go to the next row in our array. And when we're finally done, then we head back to Power Apps. So that's what this does. And now Matt is actually going to show you it working. Awesome. Thanks, Todd. Uh, won't spend too much time here. Just wanted to have an opportunity to show my beautiful family off. So uh, that's what this slide's all about. But um, yeah, uh, OK, that's me. Let's uh, jump forward. So I'm going to go ahead and share the app. I'm going to just share the the app window here. Um, OK, so here's the app. Um, I have the screen in a uh, kind of form layout because we did our, our phone layout because uh, we built it for our phone, phone form factor. So this is our home screen. On the home screen, we can do different things. We can start a new game process, which we'll do in a second, or we can view previous games. So um, they have the game date, uh, who the uh, teams were, what the final score was, if it's been logged. Um, if the home team won, we have a little trophy for to signify that. And then you can just click on here to view those game details. Um, we have a nice little uh, top image with drop shadow, and uh, which is kind of a nice, unique idea that uh, Sarah built in uh, with the design. So let's go ahead and go through the process. So we'll click on record game. The first screen is we need to um, set when the game, game date was. So we'll say it's today. And we'll home team will be the Eagles and the opponents will be the Sharks. So we'll go save and continue. All right, so here we are at the recording screen. So um, using the voice uh, input control. So I'm going to go ahead and simulate this. So here we go. Number 12, goal. Number 14, assist. Number seven, penalty. And then when we're done, we hit, hit the button again. And you can send just one stat or multiple, as we've shown. So right now it's uh, running through that process. It's talking, it's converting the file to wave. It's, you know, um, going through Azure cutting to services and you can go ahead and continue. But um, what's nice is it's going to return back the stats that we sent. And the first time the function runs, it takes a second. But here we can see below, we can see 12 goal, 14 assists, seven penalty. If we need to make any changes, we can certainly do that if it, um, 
if we set a stat that didn't exist or you got confused there for a second, um, you can click on these guys and change that up to an approved stat for this game. So we'll go ahead and we can either submit and record more or we can uh, review stats. So let's go in and review stats. Okay. So right here, we can see uh, the current stat record. So we have our numbers and then we have the stats. So you can see a goal here for this guy, um, an assist and then a penalty. So recorded everything nicely. If you'd like, you can go ahead and um, go ahead and edit a row. If you'd like, if you've got some time and you want to fill in some names. So let's say Todd. So we can go ahead and, and, and lock in the player's names at any point. Or we can even add manual, a whole new record manually. We can go back to record more stats, or we can do save and continue if that's that. And you can put in a final score here. So obviously the Eagles got a win. And so we'll say save and go home. Okay, and here we have it, uh, five to two equals versus the Sharks. Got the little trophy because we won, so we can go ahead and click on view to go back in. If you need to do any edits, add any, add any um, uh, mistakes or anything like that. Say Matt. Okay, and then go ahead and save that. All right. So we'll go save and go home. Okay, so that's our interface for this. All right, thanks, Todd. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, so that's our app, everybody. That's that's essentially what it does and, and how it goes about it there. The thing uh, I'd like to point out about the app as well is we dialed this in for lacrosse because that's the sport my son was playing at the time we, we thought this up. But you could change this for anything, right? This could be soccer, baseball, basketball, I mean, you name it. All you have to do is change the stat name columns and, and things like that, and you're good to go. Um, I was going to deep dive into how we constructed our upsert, but given the time that we're over, I'm not going to uh, spend some time on that. I'm sure you could check that out. Matt and I will be um, uh, making some videos about these going forward to kind of deep dive on the code inside of them. Uh, another thing that I was going to deep dive is how to set a lookup field value inside, um, but more importantly, a, I would like to say thank you to all these people who wrote all these articles. Only two of these articles came from Microsoft like themselves. Every single other article or add-in we found here is something that I kept track of along the way that helped us figure this out. And as you look through, you see name after name after name of someone in there. We didn't invent how to do this end to end. We took what other people had did in little pieces and we put it all together to build our app. So thank you to everybody. And this was the first time I'd ever seen the metadata browser for Dynamics 365 or Power Apps. And if you're not using that and you're doing Power Apps, you really should go check it out. It makes your life way easier. Thank you.